Hi everybody! So in this video I really wanted to talk about artist style and like what is artist style? Is it something that you really need to like stress yourself out about? How to go about finding your own artist style? And I'll probably talk about my artist style a little bit too in this video. So I did do a little bit of research with the artist style. I kind of wanted to get like a basic understanding of what people think artist style is and I know there's a lot of videos about artist style but I specifically wanted to approach it from a pottery perspective because um, I know you know a lot of people when they're talking about art and artist style and things like that they're really talking about painting and drawing and and things like that and not so much you know pottery um you know there's some arguments on whether pottery is considered an art or if it's more of a craft and um so i just kind of wanted to approach the subject from being a potter and kind of how i view artist style and i do think that potters have an artist style i think anyone who really creates anything regardless of whether it's actually considered art has an artist style so the basic definition for artist style is a manner in which the artist portrays the subject and how the artist expresses their vision. And I really like that because I feel like it, it's kind of an all-encompassing definition. And so when you take that definition and kind of put it in pottery terms, it definitely can mean um, the colors you use in your pottery, like the different glazes you prefer to use, the shapes that you prefer to use in your pottery the kind of pieces you prefer to make, like do you make lots of vases or mugs or plates or you know things like that. There's so many different techniques that you can use as well. You know, and then and then also I think it applies to like the subject matter and inspiration and kind of where you draw from to create the pieces that you create. So if I were to take this kind of definition and kind of break it down in pottery terms and then look at my own work, you can definitely see a distinct style to it. Um, I usually tend to make mugs or mug related things. I am a nerd and um, into fantasy and stuff like that so you see tons of that in my pottery. You see dragons and unicorns and things like that in the subject matter. Um, I tend to, with colors, I tend to stay away from yellow and orange. I don't really use those very often. Um, and I mostly use like the cool colors, you know, like blues and purples and um, you know, I don't use, you know, the bright warm colors as much. Um, techniques, there's definitely, you can see my work, a lot of techniques I prefer to use. I do a lot of scraffito, I do sodium silicate, and, you know, if I take my old stuff, which has a lot of texture, has a lot of round shapes, has a lot of, um, things that I do do now, um, but I just do them differently. Um, so you know there are things that you're going to naturally be drawn to and I think will kind of be part of your artist style most often, but that's not to say that it doesn't change because although I really have always loved having texture in my pottery, I did it different ways. And um, you know I used a lot of wax in the beginning because I thought that was one of the only ways you could do texture. Um, but then I found sodium silicate and I found all these things and then I've, I discovered that I enjoyed using those techniques, the scraffito, the, the carving, and that was really what was fun and what I enjoyed most about the pottery compared to using the wax. And and it's funny too because I used to use it so much that I, I revisited it and a couple months ago tried to do Mishima. And I realized I just really don't like working with wax. I just don't prefer it. I don't, I don't like it, you know, and I guess that would be kind of a way that it has changed over the years, how my artist style has changed. You know, I still do the texture, I'm still drawn to it and create it on my pottery, but it doesn't have as much of like the wax and stuff and like the way I go about it is different. And then one of the other things I wanted to talk to is about like how do you go about finding your artist style? Um, you know, like if you just started and you don't have a lot of work or maybe you know a lot of your work is just getting down the techniques and the basics and so you haven't really had a chance to experiment with you know shape and texture and different techniques you kind of you know because you, you do have to start off first off learning the basics right and so one of the things that i did was i did go back and look at my older work um and kind of compare it and contrast it to what it is currently but if you don't have that as much one of the things that, you know, a lot of artists 
on YouTube and stuff who are drawers, who are painters and things like that, they say to look at other artists that inspire you. And what about their art inspires you? So as far as looking at other artists, I think the key here is to not just directly copy what the other artists are doing. And there was another potter that I follow. Um, I can't remember her name off the top of my head. But I will make sure to put her name here and put her in the link um, below if you want to check her out. Because she does have a lot of awesome tutorials and stuff like that. Mostly does Instagram reels and things like that. But one of the things that she said in her stories at one point was that she does have students that she teaches. And a lot of times the students will come to her and be like, how do, you know, I want to do this. I want to make this exactly like this. I saw artists making it. I love it. Um, and she was talking about how she'll sit the student down and talk about like what do you like about that how could you apply it to what you like making how can you apply it to what you've already made you know and it's more like see the artist's work as an inspiration instead of just directly copying it a lot of painters and you know uh, people who do that kind of art digital artists things like that you know they'll make pinterest boards of all the different art they like and um the different artists that they prefer and kind of compare and contrast the you know what they like about the artist why they like the artist the colors that the artist likes to use the, the subject matter that the artist likes to do and kind of use that as like a starting point for what their creative artist artistic style is. And there are artists that I like, um, that I find inspiration from, um, you know, ones that like to do a lot of texture and, um, things like that. And so I've kind of added that to my work and made it my own. And, um, you know, and I'm sure at some point with some of the videos that I've made, you know, it's even inspired some of my viewers, some of, you know, you all who watch me uh, want to try something or do something or kind of add it to your own style. And I think, you know, if you take it and you break it down like that, it's, it's easier to find what your particular artistic style is and to make sure that you're not, you know, copying other artists. Some things that you can do is just ask yourself a couple questions. So you could ask yourself, like, what colors do you prefer to work with? Are there certain colors that you like, certain colors you dislike, certain colors that you find yourself being drawn more to? One of the questions that I found really helpful was what part of the process do you enjoy? And for me, like carving into leather hard clay, whether it's graffito or just carving or, you know, something like that, like I just really love doing that and I um, find myself drawn to doing that more and more. And so that definitely has become a big part of my work and my kind of artist style is you know doing carving and graffiti work and stuff like that you know one of the other questions you can ask yourself is what kind of subject matter do you like so you know for me obviously I'm a nerd book nerd you know fantasy nerd um so I just so much of my inspiration so much of my subject matter is based off of those things just you know dragons and unicorns and things like that and uh, that's kind of what my subject matter is but maybe you'll find other things maybe you prefer um mid-century modern maybe you know that kind of style maybe more art deco maybe your subject matter is more animals you know what I mean and like you can find inspiration and you'll find that there are there is subject matter that you prefer to do maybe maybe you just don't necessarily have a subject matter specifically but you really like working with glaze combinations and so you just kind of layer different kinds of glazes and things like that you know who are your favorite artists your favorite plotters why why are they your favorite um what about their work do you love and I mean not to say that potters have to just look at other potters work you know I mean I, I there are a, a lot of digital artists and painters and stuff that I love uh, watching and um, I draw inspiration from too I really want to push the point that your art style will always be changing it will never be just 100% this is what you're at you know and I mean you'll get to the point where a lot of your work can be recognized as your work um, for instance, when I went to Inseca, um, there was another artist, and we're kind of friends on Instagram, and um, I saw her work there, and then happened to run into her, and I was like, oh, you know, I saw your double-walled mugs, because she makes double-walled mugs and carves into them, um, shapes out of them and stuff, and it's really awesome, beautiful technique. Um, I even own some of her work. Um, you know, and then she was kind of saying, well, I didn't see any of your stuff. And because I had just brought some bump cups and I didn't have time and she's like, well, if you had done one of your dragon mugs, dra or dragon handled mugs, I would have known right away it was yours. You kind of get known for things. Um, 
I do want to push the fact that that doesn't mean that you're stuck doing that forever. And that doesn't mean that you're always going to have to worry about just making dragon mugs for the rest of your life. Because your, your artist style will change and will develop and you'll learn different techniques, you'll learn different preferences, it'll change over time. And then the other thing that I really wanted to mention, mostly this year, recently, being kind of roped into making things because that's what is expected of me and they know that's what I make. And and um, and not that I don't enjoy making those pieces, but I, I kind of felt stuck lately with being obligated to sell, to make the things that are popular, to make the things that everyone wants me to make, um, to make the money, you know? And um, is isn't until recently where I've like, I've been struggling and I'm still kind of fighting with it, but I, I know that, you know, your, your artist style will change subtly, um, but it is also something that you can choose to change, you know, and that's kind of where I'm at, where, um, not to say that I'm not going to keep making the things that I've always made, that I'm known for making, but... I just happen to be a person who needs a lot of passion behind what I'm doing, and lately with making the pottery and stuff, it's been a struggle to enjoy making the pieces. Um, like, there is some parts of the process I do enjoy making and that I do like making, but I feel like there is a piece of it that I want to include, but that I can't figure out how to. And um, so I am working on, and probably will be working on for a couple of months, um, figuring out how to kind of pivot a little. And um, really it's the fact that um, I do love my pottery and, and my processes and things I, I make. Um, but I feel like I do want to have more of the writing and the story aspects to my pieces and kind of make it more of an immersion and to be able to use that part of my creativity with my mugs as well and I've been really frustrated and challenged lately because I feel like with the selling and stuff like that it's like I'm just making and making and making and I haven't had enough time to experiment and um, kind of think about and process how to to do it. So uh, I guess that's something I want, you know, people who are watching this video to keep in mind is that, you know, you, you don't have to be stuck doing what you're known for making constantly. And that your artist, just like people's lives change over time and they change over time. Um, I do think that your artist style will also change over time. And you know, and I mean, to be honest, you know, sometimes if you make the mug, 500 times you might get a little bored of making that mug you know <laughs> and so um so yeah so I just think that you know bear that in mind too like even if you're like this is my artist style and this is what I'm going to go with and this is what I'm known for um you know be aware that you don't necessarily have to be stuck to that you know I just want to thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it helped a little bit um kind of give you an idea of where to start or how to look at your own work and and see exactly what your artist style is you know and I mean you know it probably won't have a, a name or a title but like you can see um but you'll be able to see what works for you what doesn't work what techniques you prefer what colors you prefer things like that I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video bye